I'm back, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and we missed you, Steve. <laughs> no, you guys did really good while I was gone. I was, I, I really liked it. Back from your secret mission to the Great Frosty North. Yes. And because it was top secret, I can't really talk about yeah, it. Yeah, of course. He's a course. Santa killer. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody on this camera signed a non-disclosure agreement about exactly what happened. <laughs> no, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Mission completed. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Oh, there you go. That's what Bush said now. <laughs> he converted his father. Well, we're all commies now anyway, right? Yeah, yeah apparently that happened while, while you were gone. gone. Too. <laughs> while you were gone, I sent Steve a memo via FedEx and certified mail. We're all communists. Just, just was determined, apparently, because he said something. Good, you know, Change is inevitable, example, comrades. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we're at the forefront of history. <laughs> so while Matt and I were at... The be pretty much the best store in the world, I think. It's uh, called the Holiday Wine Cellar in Escondido. Okay. Uh, found these cigars it's called Hops. I don't know that they taste taste much like hops. That's what they were supposed to be. Yeah. But they're still a pretty good cigar for a buck. You can kind of taste it like at the end, like when, when you when you draw it out. There's a little bit of an aftertaste in that. That's yeah. where I got the hops out of. But you know. we also picked up some of this. It's Rye IPA by Black Market Brewing. And it's yellow and black. Yeah. Well, green. Well, green, oh, and, green and black. Oh. It just look, kind of <laughs> looks <laughs> yellow and black. In this lighting, and lighting. It looks a little yellow, yeah. So more Riddler, Riddler right, though. More Riddler than, yeah. Um, I, I think the Ruthless Rye is a bit better Rye IPA. I'm waiting, this, I went for that time of the year again, and I'm really almost thinking about this uh, when it comes out again to like stock up on it. Just, you know, write the company a nice letter, just send me a case, real cheap. Can you do that, you know? I thought they made it year round. They don't, I mean, or, yeah. at, least, or at least the place I'm going to to pick up a hmm. six pack does not have it. I mean, they have everything else but Sierra Nevada, but they don't have it. I mean, I don't drug. ever go out specifically looking for it, but. It, it, it's on my top ten of favorite beers, so like if I see it, I'll grab it, and I remember places that have it. I'm just like, Rrr. ruthless ride. So. I saw a twelve pack somewhere a couple weeks ago. What? I, I, I fucked up and didn't buy it though. Well, if you remember, send me the text. I'll have to like hunt it down. Cheers. <laughs> exactly. This is important. Where is one of my favorite beers? <laughs> what are you drinking, Mike? Mm. Aha. Um. So. Coronado Brewing Company has uh, uh, a lot of different beers. Uh, I'm actually a big fan of their Mermaid Red because it's a lighter beer, but it has a lot of flavor to it. And it's mm, pretty adequately priced in most places. But I went out on a limb here and got um, an Orange Wit is, is what they call this certain type of beer because it's put a little bit of orange in there. Turns out pretty good. I actually kind of like it. I was I've, I've had an orange wit before, um, the one that um, what's a brewery in Colorado that has a bicycle on there usually? Belgian Brewing oh, Company. New Belgium. Yeah, Belgium. Yeah, uh, New Belgium. And uh, yeah, theirs isn't that good. So when I like picked it up, I was all like, I'm, I'm are really that good. Fair, let's, let's be exactly. real. Fair, <laughs> but yeah, I took a gamble. I'm like, I'll try somebody else who's doing the same thing, and it's it's actually pretty damn good. So nice. You're drinking basically the same thing I am, right? Same thing. Yeah. Pretty good. I, I'm going to have to agree with you. Ruthless Rye is a better rye IPA. Not bad, though. I like the name. And it comes in a can. Yeah, I thought that was a yuck in beer. That's beer snuggery. That's changing. No. Is it? It's changing. Oh. People are kind of getting over that. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's not so much that cans are bad for beer. It's that most beer that comes in a can is crappy beer. Oh, okay. Well, and now in San Diego, a lot of people are doing pint cans, which is the new thing. Yeah. And they're saying okay. the beer tastes better. better. Yeah. Okay. And some people are claiming it's better for the environment as well. But, like, a number of breweries are doing those tall boys mm. now. Yeah. Ian, coffee? Yeah, John was gracious enough to give me a <laughs> cup of coffee tonight. So nice, I'm nice. I'm fairly pleased. With the little cherub cup? Yeah. So I usually keep my pinky up. <laughs> pinkies up! I'm we keep it classy around here. Yeah. We put our pinkies up. <laughs> so I'm doing uh, my Isogenics 30 day cleanse. Cool. Well, cool. wow. Well. It's good. You just started yeah, on that known. stuff, right? I did. How yeah, do you feel? Monday. I feel great. It's a good product. I feel awesome. Yeah. yeah. Really looking forward to it. Next 
28 days. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, Maybe dun, you dun. won't be looking so forward to it. <laughs> That's right. No, we'll ask you no. next. A couple more weeks. <laughs> I'm going to have so much Three energy. Three or four days is going to be rough. You'll see. <laughs> you'll see the difference in me. Here's my be before. Okay. <laughs> so, 30 days now. stay away from... Uh, steaks and the idea of a cow in general may actually gravitate your mind back to 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 meat and stuff. Just, wa yeah. watch, yeah. just watch, watch Earthlings, and that'll, and that'll that'll fix you for a <laughs> little while. Just don't talk right? about that. Stuff, yeah, right? yeah. Let's not, let's not mention <laughs> don't you know carne asada fries or a California <laughs> burrito or anything <laughs> wonderful and delicious like that. Yeah, let's, let's just stay away. From My just shake watch, is really good. Watch, <laughs> the <document laughs> watch the documentary. You got it, Christy. Earthlings you got it. You're gonna make it. Speaking of bacon. Earthlings. Speaking of bacon. Okay, um, I will. Yeah. Earthlings. Earthlings will, will fix your. Will fix my meat. Your meat cravings. I yeah. don't know. I'm old blood type. I need my meat. Yeah. Well. Okay. Um, All right. I'll watch. All right. Earthlings. Got it. John. The old standby coconut uh, cavita mango flavor. So. Nice. I had I had some of there. I can't remember which one I got, but it was good. Yeah. I really like their mojito, but haven't had it at the store lately. So. Uh, Jimbo's. Yeah, I like Jimbo's too. So on to the topic, Steve. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> part three. <laughs> yeah, they, we've apparently they've been talking about property a lot on the last couple of weeks, and I felt like I needed to get my <laughs> two cents in there. Um. So basically, my idea starts with Locke, as most libertarians do. Oh, by the way, we blame the whole thing on, on us being communists on you, by the way. We, uh, we all talked about it while you're gone. We said Steve's the real communist here, so when it comes down to it, when he's back, we're just but like, I wasn't even Steve's, here. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Steve, it's, all his, it's all Steve's fault. Maybe yeah. it's a cult of personality without Steve to hold everyone together. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody oh, devolves yeah. into That's communists. Yeah. I don't Damn know. It. They wouldn't admit it. Yeah, yeah. A voluntary <laughs> cult of personality. <laughs> Before you know it. All of a sudden, we're questioning our identities. <laughs> <laughs> you question them with Mike. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Steve, Steve, you were saying private yes, property. yes, private property. <laughs> okay. So, so my to, just to give a real brief summary, um, I believe that property comes from mixing labor with. Natural resources. Okay. And that property, such as this can of beer, mm -hmm. is actually different from owning land. Um, and actually, I think Kevin asked this question last week, which I thought was a really good question, which is what is the difference between land ownership and other types of property ownership? And I think that there is a difference, and it should be treated differently. Uh, and the difference is that this can is a physical object that I can own. Mm -hmm. land, when we talk about land ownership, though, we're talking about a geographical area mm -hmm. that people are owning. It's not the dirt. Nobody says that this is that I own dirt because the wind blow, picks up, blows your dirt over into somebody else's geographical area. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't very well go over there and collect your geograph your your dirt from them and that's true that that's and then there's also the question of well are you aggressing against them because your dirt flew into their dirt you know okay it, so it, it's actually it's actually a different thing that, that we're talking about so but so let's just say it is a coordinate someplace and that's what you own so why is that's what you own it's not dirt. It's not. It's just coordinates. I mean, that's what we've been so, doing. It's coordinates. Um, I mean, it, you may be right, but we, we're where we are right now. How do we go from here to... Well, we there? haven't even discussed where right. there is okay, yet. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, we I did mean, the past two times. Well, we haven't discussed it here. With you. Got it. All right. And, and I don't think it was discussed a lot in the previous ones. I, I watched them both. Uh, I think everybody had uh, a lot of good points, including you, Christy. Well, I was the only one to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> I have a property. No, but hey, I mentioned the kangaroo rat very thoroughly about what they believe about what property is. Kangaroo rats, very <laughs> territorial. You did discuss I, kangaroo rats. I, had, <laughs> I, had, I remember that. I remember kangaroo rats, and I had I had pet kangaroo rats when I was a kid. Yeah, no, I, I they're they're probably one of the most they adorable, adorable. Little damn they really creatures are cute. on the planet. Yeah. 
for sure. No, but um, go, getting back to the topic, property, uh, uh, land ownership, mm-hmm. I think needs to be treated differently than than physical objects uh, as property. Um, because it's ex- finite, or like you know what I'm saying, like because well, we, all we, property is finite. It, I mean that that's the basis of property is being able to uh, to. Um, Solve disputes easily, right? But and maybe well, maybe we treat property. I, I mean, and maybe the outcome is uh, land ownership. Mm-hmm. Uh, is uh, we treat it as property, the same way we would other property. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it it really is different uh, in the way that I explained it. Uh, and part part of the problem is that people need land to live. You right. can't you can't just float out in space somewhere. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not, not yet. Right. Not yet. That's a good point. That's a good point. I, on, on this subject, I, I think the utilization of land has been improving drastically recently. Especially for growing food. Oh, absolutely. Like with that article you shared with us recently. Yeah. Uh, they claim a hundred time impr- uh, improvement on... More productive. A hundred times more productive <coughs> uh, using LED lighting and uh, layers. Uh, in a warehouse. In a warehouse, basically, basically and yeah. Climate controlled. and Yeah, speeding up the uh, photorespiration. So, so I, I think that we could use... Like skyscrapers, I know it's been talked about by a lot of people, but use skyscrapers to grow food. Uh, automate it as much as possible. Make it as most efficient as possible. And then if we can get the production of food out of the way, then we only have to worry about housing. Mm-hmm. And if we could make it so that... Uh, skyscrapers is one idea. Maybe you I've could I've not do, heard that. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. yeah. yeah it no, makes sense. Oh, grocery so, stores yeah. will have greenhouses yeah, on the Yeah, on the, the top. Yeah. I have heard that, yeah. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. It's like, grow it and then sell it. That makes a lot of sense. I, I used to joke when I was working overnight. It's just like, why don't we have chickens in the back for eggs? Yeah. Like, we could just, like, we've got all this land out back nobody's using. We could just put a hen house and don't have to pay for the eggs. They're right there. But, more and yeah, more people know, are doing so. it. If, yeah. we, if, we, yeah. could co- if yeah. we could keep working on making growing food and producing yeah. food more and more efficient, then that, that <clears> is one of the major needs of humanity. That, you know, you got to worry about housing, water, and food. I think of the three main needs for humans. So if you get those out of the way, then the rest of it's really, you know, about keeping people happy. People, keeping people alive is the most important. Though. You start with that, uh, and if you can make that efficient uh, and have a small footprint, then you could really feed people, house them. You, you could even maybe do it on a small plot if, if you're doing efficiencies like they're talking about. But real food, it, healthy food, not... Right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Bingo, bango. You got to make sure it's all healthy and you have all the nutrients and everything. But if you if you could do that on a small property. So we do that within the realm of private property, or do we just all well, give away our land and? Here's, and here's kind of how I see it. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. No, that's. that's... Uh, I don't think the Romans got too many things right. Okay. But one of the things I think they got right was they actually had two different types of property ownership. Mm-hmm. And they use two different words for it. In Latin, the word uh, dominium is mm-hmm. what we commonly like think dominion, of as yeah. as property ownership. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's where we get the word dominion from. Right. And then they had eus. Mm-hmm. Which is use of it. Basically, yeah, uh, it's like a stewardship. And I think I think land should be <clears throat> treated, and, and they were treated differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think Land ownership should be more uh, a stewardship rather than a a hard ownership. Well, Steve, you know, when I own a property, I like to pour as much nuclear waste on it so nobody will ever tamper with it for a million years. This is mine <laughs> even after I'm dead. You know, no, I mean, like, you know, that that, um, that whole use, uh, use and dominium thing is, is, is really interesting in a legal sense because... As far as I can tell, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, that's what YouTube's for, apparently. People are, are commenting. Thank you for commenting. Um, 
you know, um, use is like renting a property. And, and this still comes from, 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 you know, old common law and all that sort of stuff. And, and as somebody who, not revealing too much inform, information, is a renter, um, you know, renting a property uh, in some ways has a lot more advantages than owning it. But at minimum, the thing that's really interesting, if the authorities show up and you're renting a property, and, you know, they're like, oh, can we come inside? No. Well, is this your property? <coughs> no. Well, we can come inside then. Wait, wait, wait. Like what to... authority? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, but see, the, but what I, I, I guess what I'm breaking <laughs> that into is yeah. that the, those two different class, classifications of property are important because those are really two separate, in my mind, two separate ideas. Of like, okay, so right. you've had an agreement to use this property, and usually when you have when you sign a rental agreement of some sort, be it an apartment or you know to say you know acres of land you have some some sort of agreement of that you're probably going to do some sort of maintenance on the property you know so that use and dominion thing is is pretty damn important and that it, it is good to to differentiate between the two that you know, i think that gets back to christy's idea of well, of saving it. land i was gonna say it. that was exactly read my mind what if we don't want to use it? Do we really want to encourage people to use everything and abuse everything? Because they're going to do it. If they can get land, they're going to use it. They're well, going to... They're going to <coughs> that's how they'll get land. Who's they? People who want to make money off of, off of the land. Theoretical, theoretical other <laughs> people. Right. I, I, I think I a lot of them. I mean, no, but here, here, here's, here's what, what it really, really comes down to. Or, here's what it really comes down to. And I'll probably get a lot of people hating me when I say this. But rights don't exist tangibly. Right. right. They're a concept no, we agree. use for right. mitigating disputes. Yeah. Nice. And agree. that's what it really yeah. comes down to is that's mitigating like disputes gonna, between individual people. It may just fall apart so when, as a state. So when, so when we're yeah. talking about general concepts like land ownership it's and property, a, yeah. it's all a it's tool. all yeah. yeah, it's all a tool. It's a right. it's a concept that may take vastly different form in practical application and that practical application should be as diverse as the situations that are involved so now that we kn know that what what happens what should people prepare themselves for when the state collapses and is no longer being that facilitator of that thing called private property we we can make predictions and we can make we we can theorize all we want but the but the fact of the matter is, is we're not going to know <clears throat> for, sh for right. sure You're until right. things happen. Right. I think this is... It's it like saying, oh, sorry. what would happen if... John and I got into a dispute. Yeah, but you're brilliant. And, well, and it depends on what happens. <laughs> well, I, mean, I was just asking this, well, we you. It depends on the situation. It depends on... We can, we can look at what's being done now and what we think we could do to improve the situation. When it comes to, like, really fundamental stuff like property and rights and to be quite honest I, I agree with you Steve that like it's rights are as, as fictional in the air as everything else it just so happens that we agree upon it because it makes sense but um, when it comes to like we're, you know we're talking about fundamental things and we're talking about okay very fundamental things that at one point or another have to be agreed upon in a future where there is no state which hopefully I well just... they only have to be agreed upon between the parties that the dispute exactly between exactly so we're, we're talking about these really fundamental things but when I talk to people about stuff like that and they're like well what about this what about this and you know having some experience with conversations like that and I think everybody here has had very good conversations with people about you know very fundamental things about humanity <coughs> property rights uh, things like of that nature um i always you know at one point or another very early on in the conversation i like to throw in there very specifically because of like straw man arguments i always throw in there like i'm not promising you you utopia i'm not saying the future right. is going to be wonderful and per perfect and there's going to be rainbows and there's going to be you know unicorns jumping around we have to shooting out ice cream cones like we, no it's not going to be not going to be overnight it's yeah. going to be problem by problem that we tackle this uh -huh. and, it, and it'll likely evolve to whatever system works best in in a free society that's how we've gotten where we are now it, it's humanity has worked hard to get the better ideas up to the front 
you have to keep refining. You try something new. That's why we can't keep doing what we're doing now. We have to try something new and get ideas out there. That's why we're all here talking. And, and you know, we talk about the land running out, for instance, but that doesn't take into account future technologies as well, including, you know, you know, seasteading, uh, seasteading, um, coloniz colonizing other planets, that kind of thing. And better use of current land, too. And better use of current land. With that, you, you do need to take that into account. Well, and, and there's situations, too, like, uh, like, uh, Turner. He owns, like, half of Montana. Does he really? Yeah. yeah he, Tim Turner he owns is, uh, thousands yeah. of acres wow. in Montana. And you know, he, he's probably never even been to, to any of it. <laughs> and... So there's he's no such obviously thing as property rights in a voluntarius. Yeah. Right. So, so. To, to answer the question, yes. So <laughs> anarcho capitalism, is it? Does that? Mm. What it was? No, I'm just. I don't know that I would call myself necessarily an anarcho capitalist, though. You see, okay. um, mainly, mainly because that the word capitalist has a negative connotation. I with mean, with most the the. <laughs> De the working definition that most people have of capitalism is not what I espouse, which is crony capitalism, our modern society type And situation. the working definition of capitalism is not something I'd agree with either. So I also try to stray away from that. Like, people ask me, you know, what I believe in, I us usually I'll say something like, I believe in a society where all human interaction is voluntary. That's usually my go-to. Like I, that's the way I see the basic, world. The basic definition of voluntary. Yeah. I'd add that cap anarcho-capitalism, as I understand it, doesn't do enough to address hierarchies. You know, they're usually absolutely. So I don't think it's sustainable uh, unless you address. So the state, the hierarchy in the state, in its state form or its religious form, isn't the only ill. You know, that's not the only bad thing. I'm extremely sensitive to. Uh, any centers of gravity that 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 uh, or accumulation of wealth that in that could m metastasize into you know power power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely right so yeah uh, I don't think that anarcho capitalism as I understand it goes far enough to to build a sustainable and future. and to be clear that doesn't mean that we advocate aggression against. Yeah. Right, no, absolutely, that absolutely not, yeah, absolutely. I, I think no matter what you call it, as long as you're practicing something that is moral and you're, and you're everything, like we're talking about, is voluntary, no matter if you call it communism, capitalism, it doesn't matter. As long as you're not harming anybody or initiate aggression, you, you can live however you want. It, that, that's the great thing about voluntarism and people who believe in it is as long as you're not harming somebody else, there's no problem. Agreed. Yeah, <coughs> I can't argue with that. Yeah, ultimately it comes down to living peacefully and voluntary, vol voluntarily. Um, but let me ask one question. Um, no, so you, you used all your questions already. <laughs> Damn it. I hate when that happens. Pick another card. <laughs> <laughs> Phone Go back three spaces. Phone a friend. Phone a friend or ask the audience. Early on. You went down the chute rather than the ladder. So... Uh, <laughs> so in a theoretical situation where equality uh, butts heads with voluntary interaction, which do you think is the more is the more uh, important? Good question. Voluntary to me. Um, I don't and, think and ultimately, aren't that's equal. where I fall too. Yeah, to me, but, these things aren't equal, and but, that's okay. And I'm okay, but I, I'm not. And I'm not talking about equality as in we all have the exact same thing. I'm, I mean equality like We're in this theoretical situation where all the land is owned and more people are coming into the world, they are now, they are now at a disadvantage uh, compared to the people who came before them where there, were, where there was land that was homesteadable. Um, like, it, like it is now. Right. Like we are now. Um, At that point in time, I would think that we would 
evolve again. You know what I mean? Like the, we would find a new that's uh, a new ethics or, or create a system that that uh, worked for. Yeah, that's the, I think that's the one nice thing is that evolution brings about the best. Yeah, working in a synergistic manner is going to, of course, lead to more. And, and more it, it doesn't. Right. It doesn't right, even right. need to be a, a DNA change. It, it it could just be the evolution of ideas amongst humans. Absolutely. So that that's what that's what is a major factor in actually how humanity has changed. If you look at <coughs> the DNA change of humans, what is it? Only a few percentage versus chimps. Right. Not even a few. Like, yeah, not even a like percentage. One like, and a half. Yeah, percent. It's one percent. Yeah. Yeah. is what I've read. It's, so yeah. it's pretty. It's pretty much nothing. So, if you look at that difference and you look at, well, it's, it can't be just the DNA if it's just that. It's got to be the ideas that have been passed along. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one way to live, uh, to live, to have your legacy live on is through DNA. It, that, that's one way. But another way is through the passage of ideas and actions. Mm -hmm. And that, I, I, I'm not sure which one is actually better. I was actually contemplating this earlier. If you pass on great ideas and that lives on much longer than any DNA is ever going to. Buildings, it, too. Uh, like that that <laughs> yeah, is yeah. A, a yeah. very meaningful way uh, to, you know, feel that you had some sort of contribution to this world and humanity. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll, I'll, agree to, I'll agree to that and, 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 I'll, and add on there for sure that, you know, I mean, uh, what you guys are saying, that the, the difference between, you know, Chimpanzees, bonobos, which are kind of on an almost equal playing field, and and human beings is less than bonobos you know. is an interesting species. You should yeah. look into bonobos. They're bonobos. Really close, Wikipedia, they? Yeah. go. Yeah. Anyways, but so the difference between those well, two. There are species of chimpanzee, but yeah. their their sexual habits and and what the way they solve disputes and stuff in their in their uh, I guess you call it a society. Uh, it's really interesting. Which is much different from chimpanzees, which are more aggressive. But they're both incredibly, incredibly close to our own DNA. So, you know, so, you know, this is, the, I mean, I've mentioned this to, to a couple <coughs> people is, um, I mean, shit, we're like 200 years, 250 years pushing it away from most of Europe being run by monarchies. Think about that. Not yeah. really that long. Right. Right. Not really that long when it comes into the, the, the span of human and civilization. real monarchies. We're not talking about England where, yeah. where she's basically just a welfare whore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, but we're talking about, like, legitimate, like, you know, crown, crown scepter and egg. holy hand grenade thing. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? And, you and know, how, like... And and how, much, how much has our DNA changed since then? Pretty much nothing. nothing. Right. It's just but a matter it's of all ideas. ideas. That's how powerful ideas. But are. in this vein as well, right? So like uh, talking about, you know, evolution. Like uh, as I suspect, will occur uh, through in nonviolent communication and and, and communicating uh, empathetically. We'll see a change over time, and that could have uh, a great impact on. On well, actually, it would impact greatly the final destination, if you will, or the path that we take. For instance, you know, if uh, as people become more empathetic, uh, maybe we would lose our attachment for for you know sitting Heaven. Right. sitting on ten right. thousand acres. Exactly. I was just and in losing our yeah. attachment to 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 different things that we consider humanity. I mean, is, yeah. is that something that, like, might result in, like, sentient, like, uh, like, androids, like, at all? You know what I'm saying? But like, I could you know, put a lot of androids on 10,000 acres. Maybe if you fell in love with an android, <laughs> bought a property, and you both grew food for yourselves. Yeah. I could have you know, a farm like, on 10,000 acres. I, I, I like think I could, I could build a log cabin with an android. I think that's perfectly plausible. And I'm <laughs> pretty sure there'd be robot sex involved. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. It'd have to be. Yeah. But unfortunately, we're out of with time. Your, uh, it happened again. We're out of time. We can't talk about robots. We will get week. to this episode eventually. At one point or another, robot sex will We're promising you a robot sex episode. <laughs> it might even be again. live. No. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know about live. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty wild to you stream the robot sex episode or, or live stream it. That'd no, I wasn't saying yeah. that. It was like
Live. Well, now I, want, now, now I want to do it. Now I want to do it. You're saying, let's do it live? Okay, fine. Now let's do a live robot sex episode. Sure. Fuck okay, it. Let's do it right now. <laughs> Where are the robots? <laughs> Damn it. Okay. Uh, so I need a couple boxes and aluminum foil, right? Okay. <laughs> I've seen that episode. <laughs> Have a good evening, everybody. Have a good one. Thank you.